For the longest time, people have said that Blood of the Dead is the hardest easter egg to complete. And that's simply not true. In reality, people just don't understand how to properly complete it. We found so many tips and tricks to help us out, as well as hints the developers themselves put in the map to try and help us complete this easter egg. So today, I'm here to stop all this. Today, I will teach you how to beat the Blood of the Dead easter egg with ease in 2022. Before we begin, let's go over the class setup real quick. For your perks, you want all the crutch perks, so that means you want Dying Wish, Victorious Tortoise, Winter's Whale, and Stamina. If you're not very good at BO4 Zombies, then I suggest you run Winter's Whale in your modifier slot. You want your Specialist to be the Path of Sorrows, and you want your starting weapon to be the Strife. For your Elixirs, you want to bring anywhere but here, Temporal Gift, Arsenal Accelerator, and Aftertaste. If you want to run Mega Elixirs like Perkaholic and Power Keg, feel free to do so. You can also run a Talisman to start the game with a level 2 or a level 3 Specialist. So if you have one of those, be sure to put it on because the sooner we get a level 2 specialist, the sooner we can start the easter egg. And finally, you want to load in as Richtofen for the boss fight. To start this easter egg, you're going to need the Hell's Retriever, the Spoon, the Monkey Bombs, and 3 Shield Charges. The way I normally start my easter egg run is I fill up the first dog, turn on power, and then wait to cross the catwalk until I have my Path of Sorrows. I also recommend hitting the mystery box one time to get a pretty decent weapon so you can easily take out the Wardens early on. Once I have my specialist, I go through the catwalk, kill everything with it to try and level it up as soon as possible. And right here, if you throw a grenade to kill the Hellhounds or the Warden, the Warden will actually spawn in and you can take him out to get more points. After I take out the Warden, I go fill up the second dog. Once I fill the second dog, I end the round and it'll always be a dog round. The first round after you enter Alcatraz will always be a dog round. So I use this time to grab all the shield parts and turn on the second power switch. Then I build the shield and kill the Hellhounds with the shock key on my shield to get some charges. As I said, we need three to start this easter egg, so the sooner you get them, the better. Then I go fill up the third and final dog. But before I do that, I go in the tonic room and I write down these three numbers. You will need these three numbers for the spoon. Generally, I will have my specialist again by this point, so after I fill up the Hellhound, I'll just kill all the zombies with the sword. Once I end the round, I go grab my Hell's Retriever and make my way down to the docks. Along the way, you need to shock the number panel at the bottom of the Citadel Tunnels with your shield to turn it on. Now you need to input the three numbers you got earlier from the Warden's office into the number panel. If you input the right numbers, then the number panel will flicker and eventually turn off. Now go down to the docks and shock this shock box, grab the skull for the free Blundergat, and throw your house retriever in the net to grab the spoon. And then I will pop Arsenal Accelerator and knife all the zombies to get my sword back as soon as possible. Most of the time, I will already have my level 2 sword by this point, so then I'll just make my way up to do the monkey bombs, but if not, then I will use this time to get my sword to level 2. Once you have a level 2 specialist, go under the stairs leading outside of the mob spawn room, and there will be a monkey bomb there. This monkey bomb is a soul box. I believe it is 20 kills you need, so what I like to do is I like to get a horde, and then lead them into that room, and kill all the zombies by pulling out my sword, because if you don't know, if you kill the zombies while you're pulling out your specialist, it'll both respawn the zombie and count as a kill. If you can't fill it in one use of your specialist, that's fine, don't worry about it. Focus on getting that done, and you know it's done when the monkey bomb's hat is red. Then shoot the monkey bomb and go back to the spawn room for Blood of the Dead, and grab your monkey bombs. Now we are ready to start this easter egg. So go to the roof, shock the Pack-a-Punch machine, and lure the ward into his house. Now I see a lot of people having trouble with this step, and it's really not that hard. How I do this every time is I run up, knife the wall, run down the stairs, and around that time the warden will probably be entering the house. So then I get my monkey bomb ready, and I throw it and I bank it off of the titan wall bot. And 99% of the time that will work and he will destroy the wall allowing you access to the secret room. Now I'll grab the red orb and interact with the electric chair, and we have started this easter egg. Now at this time, I would suggest that you get the Hell's Retriever back, because we will need it for an easter egg step. Now place the red orb on the map in the spawn room, and interact with the Cranorium. Once you do that, we are now on the bird step. And while you're doing this step, I suggest getting the upgraded shield, the free blender gat if you don't get it from the box while you're trying to get the upgraded shield, the magma gat, and four shield charges, one for each bird. Now you can go back to the Mob of the Dead spawn room, and now we have to look for a bird four times on four different rounds. There's four locations where this first bird can spawn, and I'm showing you all of them right here. You should be able to find it pretty quickly. Once you find him, just shock him, and he will fly away, and you can move on to the next round. Here's a tip in case you ever run out of shield charges, and you don't want to flip the round for whatever reason. 
Every round, there will be one random shock box on the map that will be sparking. If you find one that's sparking, pull out your shield and interact with it to get max shield charges. Now here's the misconception about the bird stuff. People think it spawns random and you have to check like 42 spawn locations or something like that, when that's simply not true. When you're ready to look for the second bird, before you end the round, make your way to the top of the gondola and then end the round. Now if you look through your spectral vision and your shield, and if you look out into the water, you'll see a blue light traveling somewhere and that's where the bird will go. If he goes to the far right, then he's in the warden's office, or somewhere around there. If he goes down, then he's in the docks. If he goes to the far left, then he's at spawn or the catwalk, and so on. When you see where he goes, go to that area, and now you just have to look at, like, five spawn locations to find him. So even if you don't know any of the spawn locations, you know where the general area is where he's at. Just keep looking through the shield, and if you hear the seagull then you're close. If you see the seagull, shock him and get ready to do it the next round. While I'm doing the bird step is whenever I get both the magma gat and the upgraded shield as well, so I suggest you do that too. To get the upgraded shield, it's very simple. Just hit the mystery box. The goal here is to try to move the mystery box, and the box will always move within 5 to 9 hits of it. So when you see the lock in the box, shock it with your key until the keyhole turns blue, and then throw your Hell's Retriever at the lock, and you will get the upgraded shield. And also here's a quick tip for co-op. If one person shocks a lock, he can tell everyone to throw their Hell's Retrievers at the same time, and everyone will get it regardless of where you are in the map. Throw. <laughs> I love that. I think that's pretty cool and I don't think a lot of people know that, so here's an extra tip for you. For the Magma Gat, first you need to get the Blunder Gat. You can either get it out of the box or get it via the side quest. To get the free Blunder Gat, you have to collect 5 blue skulls with your Hell's Retriever. And the locations are as follows. There's one above the truck and spawn, one beside the pack punch machine on the roof, one to the left of the shock box in the docks, one behind the warden's office, and one in the toilet right outside of the mob spawn. Then go to the warden's office and grab it. Now that you have the Blunder Gat, go to the warden's house and place the Blunder Gat in the fire. Now you will have to get 18 kills and pick up their souls before they disappear. Once you have enough souls, you will hear an audio cue telling you that you're done. That, you brain -dead Triton? And before you continue, I suggest you getting down to one to two zombies for this part. Now grab the Mabagat and we need to bring it to the new industries building. During this process, you cannot shoot the Mabagat more than once and you cannot switch weapons. Along the way, you will see these barrels with blue flames in them. You have to reignite the fire on the Mabagat using these barrels. So just walk up to it and it'll reignite the flame and you'll be good to go. Keep doing this until you get to the new industries building and then place the Mabagat in this machine right here Pick it back up and kill the warden and you're done. Going back to the bird step now, do the same thing for the third bird that you did for the second, and for the fourth bird you'll need to listen around for an audio cue. Now this bird can only spawn at the wardens and at docks. Eventually you will hear something like this, and additionally you will see a white flash if you look there long enough. Now for this, I will show you where all the locations are where it can spawn because as far as I know, there is no way to find out where this thing is besides just looking for it. But thankfully there's only like 10 locations and they're all sort of close to each other. But regardless, when you hear the audio cue, remember that location. Now go to the number panel and type in 872 to get a zombie blood, pop your temporal gift, grab the zombie blood, go back to the location where you heard the bird, and look through your spectral vision. When you see the bird, throw your Hell's Retriever at it, pick up the Cronorium it dropped, and bring it back to the electric chair in the warden's office. When the pages in the book are flipping, interact with it to stop it, and then look through your spectral vision to see the code. Now write down that code or remember it, do whatever you need to do, but you need to put it into the number panel. Once you do that, you have to find one of five orbs and shock it to start the next step. The five orb locations are as follows. There's one by the docks by the sniper tower, the second is by the fan trap outside the warden's office, the third is by a shock box in the shower room, the fourth is in the New Industries building, and the fifth is in the first power room outside of spawn. Find out where the orb is and skip to that chapter in the video. For this video though, we're going to start off with the hardest one that people don't know how to do at all, and that is of course, the dock step. The infamous Morse code step that everyone hates and no one knows how to do. So if the orb is at docks, first off, shock the orb to start the challenge. Now before you start this, I suggest getting down to one to two zombies. Now go to the corner in the warden's office and you will see this machine. You have to type a certain number in Morse code in this machine. If at any point you hear this,
you got the number wrong. Now there's two ways to beat this, one legit and the other is brute forcing. First off, we'll start with how you legitimately complete it. There's three buoys around the map that if you look through your spectral vision, they will give you a number in Morse code. There's one by the top of the gondola, there's one by the swordfish wall by, and there's one outside of spawn. When you get all three numbers, add them up and type the sum into the machine in Morse code. A dot is a quick press and a dash is a press for around 2 to 3 seconds. You could either do it like that, or you can do what I like to do and just brute force it. So to brute force it, first I type the number 1 in Morse code, which is dot dash 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 dash. If you hear the warden's laugh, then the number is less than 10. So type in 9, 8, 7, and just keep going down until you find it. If you put the number 1 in and it doesn't give you the warden's laugh, then you want to type in the number 5, which is dot 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 dot. Now keep note at what point you hear the warden's laugh. If you hear it at the second dot, then your second number is 1. If you hear it at the fourth dot, then your second number is 3, etc. From my experience, and I've done this easter egg probably around 50 times I'd say, the number is always between 7 and 14. If for some reason you get a number that's outside of that range, let me know down below in the comments and I will leave an update in the pinned comments. Eventually, you will hear your character say that you did it correctly, which means you're on to the next step. See? Morse code, not that hard, right? But anyways, once you complete it, go up to the infirmary and kill a zombie in this room. When you do, look through the shield and you'll see a ghost. Now you gotta shock the ghost and get kills by him until he starts moving. Now you have to escort him to the docks where you first shock the red orb. When you get him down there, he'll go through the portal and drop a red orb. Pick up the red orb and go to the warden's house again to get the next code to start another challenge. Next up is the power room. First, obviously shock the red orb, and look at the ghost moving by the power switches until you hear a quote. I say do this because there is a very small chance that your game will glitch out and you'll have to redo this step. So to avoid that, just waste a couple seconds and look at the ghost in spectral vision until you hear a quote from your character. Now make your way down to the other power room and interact with this generator. Now for all of these, I suggest getting down to one to two zombies before you get into the thick of it. So get down to the end of the round and then start this challenge. Interacting with the generator will start the Samantha Says step. There's five waves of this. The first wave is just one generator. The second wave is two generators. And it just keeps going up till the fifth and final wave is a five code sequence that you have to repeat. Once you complete the fifth wave, there will be three generators with their lights on and there will be a fourth one flashing. Ignore the flashing one. That one's just a decoy. Make sure you keep note of where all the consistent lights are, and look at this cheat sheet right here. With this, you will never have to take another picture of the symbol or write it down or do anything like that ever again. Now real quick, I'm going to explain my cheat sheet. So these are where all the locations are that I'm showing you on screen. So if you ever forget what exactly I mean by left, or pack, or front, just go back to this part of the video for clarity. So looking at my cheat sheet, my three codes were left, front, and pack. So my three numbers would be 2, 3, and 4. Once you know your numbers, grab your punch card and make your way to the spawn room. Insert the punch card into this machine and six monitors will turn on, three of which will have your symbols. When you find one of your symbols, interact with it and you'll see another symbol. And that leads you on to the last part of this cheat sheet. So when I found all three symbols, my letters were A, E, and F. I feel like this is easier than just remembering robot control, diamonds, and circle with a line through it. A, E, F. That's a lot simpler, right? Now finally, when you have your letters, make your way back to the spawn power room and look through your spectral vision to see the ghost. Now the ghost will be reaching for the lovers. If you look closely, your three symbols will be on a piece of paper in front of three separate generators. When you see the ghost reaching for a lever with his symbol next to it, shock him. Shocking him will make him pull the lever down and he will continue if that was correct, but if that was incorrect, then he will disappear as well as the red orb and you'll have to do this whole step over again. But if you did it correctly, he'll pull the lever down and keep going. Do this for the last two symbols, and if you did it right on the third time, he will disappear, dropping a red orb. Pick it up, and make your way back to the warden's house for another code. Now for honestly what I think is the hardest step in this whole easter egg when you actually know what you're doing, the new industry step. For this step, you will need to have the upgraded shield. So to start the challenge, go shock the orb in the new industry's building, and make your way to the mob of the dead spawn room. Once you're here, kill a zombie and shock the ghost in spectral vision. 
Now, this step is pretty straightforward, if I'm gonna be honest. When you first shock him, he will go around the cafeteria and grab a spoon, and then he will make his way to the new industries building to kill another ghost. You need to stop him by sucking him with your key. So shock the ghost in spectral vision and he will be in normal vision, and then you just have to suck him with your key. Eventually, after like 10 to 15 seconds, he will disappear, and you have to shock him again and repeat this process. Quick tip, pay attention to where the zombies are. Trust me when I say you don't want to kill them with a shield blast and end up having to finish this step on the next round. It will not end well for you, so make sure you lead the zombies away from the ghost before you shield blast them. On solo, you'll need to do this four times. You'll know you're done when the ghost is super red and his arms are like extended out and he's walking in a really weird way. It's hard to explain. You see the footage and you'll see it in your game when you've sucked them enough. But when you have sucked them enough, now make your way to the new industries building and camp right beside the Mog 12 wall by. When you see him coming, wait for him to pass the mog wall by, and then turn on the trap in the new industry's building to kill him. Once the trap's off, pick up the orb and you completed this challenge. Now we're down to the final two challenges, which are the easiest to do. First, we're going to talk about the one outside the warden's office. Shock the orb and then make your way to the cafeteria. When you're in the cafeteria, kill a zombie and shock the ghost to start the challenge. Once you shock the ghost, you will have to escort him to the red orb that you already shocked. Now, he will go the same route every single game, and there will be a lot of zombies trying to kill both you and the ghost. If the ghost gets hit enough, he will get really red and eventually disappear. And if he dies, then you're just gonna have to do this whole step on the next round, so try to avoid that. All you have to do to complete this step, basically, is just spam your Magma Gat everywhere. When you get by the Hell's Retriever dog, a warden will spawn, but that's not a big deal because if you just shoot two shots in front of his path where he's walking, he will die pretty much instantly. And then you'll just have to worry about the zombies again. And also, if you have a specialist, use it here and kill all the zombies and just keep going until he gets to the red orb and pick up the orb and you are ready for the next challenge. And finally, we have the showers challenge. To do this, you have to shock the orb, obviously, and a ghost will come out holding a banjo. Grab the banjo and go to a blue circle around the area. At this point, the banjo is a soul box. You just have to fill up the banjo, and you will know that you're done whenever you hear a banjo rip and you see a red outline on the screen. If you start taking damage for no reason, like it's ticking off 10 damage at a time, then that means you have failed the step. But that's alright, it's not like the other ones where you have to wait till the next round. All you have to do is give him back the banjo and then pick it right back up to reset the timer. Once the challenge is done, return the banjo to the ghost and he will eventually disappear, dropping a red orb. Pick it up and you are done with this challenge. Once you have done all five challenges, go to the spawn room and interact with the map again to put all six orbs in place. Once you've done that, go back to the electric chair in the warden's office and interact with it. If you've done all five challenges, then you'll get a white flash and you'll see the summoning key in his chest. Now at this point, you are basically done with this easter egg because the boss fight is so free it's not even funny. Just stand next to the summoning key until you get the cutscene. On the other end of the cutscene, the seagull will free you from the prison cell and you can grab your loot from the bag and kill the warden. Then shoot the second warden until he stops and then run to spawn. Along the way though, shock the dogs for free shocks. You only need two more to complete this easter egg. When you get to spawn and all the ghosts pick up the warden, he will drop another red orb. Pick up the red orb and place the seventh and final red orb in the map and the map will disappear, opening up the path for the boss fight. Now at this point, grab all your perks if you went down at all, pack a punch all your weapons, get a max shield if you need to, and when you're ready for the boss fight, make your way up the stairs and interact with the garage door and you will be put in the boss fight. Now this boss fight's pretty simple, there's only three phases and basically they take no skill. I don't know why this boss fight is so easy compared to the rest of the easter egg. Like that makes no sense to me, but anyways, to beat the first phase you have to kill four wardens. And this is pretty simple, all you have to do is just shoot two magma gas shots in front of where the warden is walking and he will die in around like 5 seconds. Once you kill all four, kill the rest of the zombies and hellhounds and whatnot, and you will see a warden go somewhere in the map. At this point he will spawn three orbs. Destroy all the orbs he shoots out and wait about five seconds and then shock the orb above the machine in the center of the boss fight. Now for phase two it's the same thing as phase one except there's eight wardens. Do the same thing as you did for phase one and when you shock the orb again go into the dark mechanism. At this point you will respawn as Great War Richtofen. Now simply go back to the fight, stun the giant warden and kill him either by spamming the magma gap or spamming your sword. And when you kill the giant warden you will have successfully completed this boss fight as well as this whole easter egg. 
Hats off to you. Great job. So congratulations. You have successfully completed what most people consider to be the hardest easter egg in COD Zombies history. If you beat this quest thanks to this tutorial, let me know down below in the comments. Also, drop a like, subscribe if you're new. I recently put out a video where I completed every single easter egg in COD Zombies history all in one video. So if you want to go check that out, click the card on the end screen or just go to my YouTube channel and it'll be the first video that you see. Shout out to all my sponsors, their names are on the screen right now. If you guys want to become a sponsor, click the link down below in the description or click the join button below this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and with that being said, this is Joltz, signing out. Peace!